So military culture is very important for peacekeeping operations. First, for a start, um, military organizations are the main actors um, deployed and tasked with uh, peacekeeping activities in peacekeeping operations. In 2017 alone, 90,000 sol soldiers were deployed in peace operations all around the world. So just that gives you an idea about how much. Uh, how, how important it is to have soldiers deployed in peacekeeping operations. And so peacekeepers, soldiers deployed as peacekeepers, have to implement uh, a peacekeeping mandate. So it really is very important how they interpret um, humanitarian versus military tasks, uh, whether it's very important whether they are going to emphasize combat activities over logistics. So how they interpret the mandate influences um, First, um, the way in which they behave in the field, how many patrols they do, how much civic activities they do, but also peacekeeping effectiveness. So in my book, I show that those soldiers, that those peacekeeping troops that were doing more combat activities were actually be better able to um, diminish insurgent activities in their respective area operations. And those that were more inclined to do humanitarian activities, they were much better at establishing contact with the locals. Well, I think that military sociology provides some really important insights to the functioning and structures of state military organizations. Um, and in contemporary military operation, it's really important to understand also variables that, you know, are a little bit, that go beyond, you know, uh, peacekeepers being or not being, for instance, um, having a military background. So um, it's really important to try to think about how certain sociological dynamics inside the military matters for um, interesting phenomena and dynamics to study. For instance, um, the, the, you know, the big issue of female retention in state military organizations is a really, is a really important uh, question that should be asked from a sociological point of view, but that could also impact you know, other much broader uh, phenomena. Similarly, I think that you know, certain, certain uh, attitudes to command and leadership could, with the, with inside a military organization, or the cohesion, the determinants of cohesion within the officer corps or at lower levels of the command structure, could be so, uh, very important for understanding, for instance, the, the notion of military involvement in politics or civil-military relations at large. So I've recently read Kaitlin Talmud's uh, The Dictator's Army, um, and I like it for, I think, for three reasons. The first one is that it's really a book that takes tactical and operational level uh, very much into account. It takes tactics really seriously. And it tries to also bring in a little bit of military sociology by um, trying to understand the level of allegiance of the officer corps to the dictator, for instance. So this is one, one big reason why I really like that book. Um, so the second reason why I really like it, it's, um, it's, um, it's one of the few books that look at uh, non-Western, not, not only Western cases, which, is, which makes it also very interesting and tries to develop you know, broader concept that would allow us to, to study and go beyond you know, the fact that the war studies remains a quite Western-centric discipline. I think we need to go beyond that. Um, and the third reason why I, I, I really like it um, is, has to do with the fact that she, she, she's a great example of you know, someone that has very rich empirical material and combines it with very, very high level of theoretical sophistication. So really recommend it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.